Looking at these answer choices, the thing that draws me in right away, we've got one with a period. So now I gotta think about sentence structure. Where do sentences begin and end? Doesn't mean the period's right, it just means I've gotta think about sentences and where they start and end because that's the whole thing. Jamaican uh, British artist Willard Wiggin is known for his remarkable microsculptures. Now I stop there because C opens that up, that opens that possibility up, right? It could end right there. Now let's just stop there because of that option and say that that could be a sentence, right? So this first part could be its own sentence. So check. Now let's continue. What do we have next? We're going to kind of think about the punctuation. Creations so small that they are best viewed through a microscope. Well, that's a description. Uh, it's talking about some creations. Let's see. We got a comma here. Creations so small that they are best viewed through a microscope. Wigan sculptures are made from tiny natural materials, such as spiderweb strands. Well, there we go. We have another sentence. The, the, the sentence here is in yellow, and then let's use the sentence we did before, is basically up to microsculptures. So regardless of anything else, regardless of all the other clauses, we have two complete sentences that could stand on their own. Jamaican British artist Willard Wigan is known for his remarkable microsculptures. Stop. Wigan sculptures are made from tiny natural materials. Stop, right? We need two stops, we need two hard stops. One is already given to us, always at the end, but where's the other one? Well, let's look at our choices. The only choice that includes that hard stop is choice C. A has nothing interrupting these clauses. We, we definitely need something. There was a reason I stopped after microstructures originally. Now, B is the trap. Uh, because they deliberately gave us like an intro clause that could have been like an ending clause for the first sentence, right? Because it's basically describing the sculptures. So both the first sentence and the second sentence also talk about the sculptures, right? The first sentence ends talking about the sculptures. So we could have added on that extra clause to the first sentence to describe what the micro sculptures are. Or since the second sentence begins by talking about the micro sculptures, we could start that sentence with the intro clause that then describes the micro sculptures there. So it's the latter. It's, it's that's what we did is we basically want it because we have no choice. We have to make it an intro clause because of the options that were given. But I really want to be clear here. It's not like that is definitively correct if we were writing the sentence from scratch. You might have written it like this. I'm going to emphasize the, the pauses for uh, effect here. Jamaican British artist Willard Wigan is known for his remarkable microsculptures. Mic ah, let me try again. Is known for his remarkable microsculptures, creations so small that they are best viewed through a microscope. Wigan sculptures are made from tiny natural materials such as spiderweb strands. So I know I stumbled, but I hope you heard the parts that where we could have made the period, right? We could have put the period after microscope right here and then just put that clause with the first sentence. It's not wrong to do that, but we don't have that choice. We don't have that option, but they know that many of you are going to read B and kind of stop short and be like, oh yeah, that sounds fine. It's describing the sculptures. We're good to go but you gotta read the whole sentence, especially because the answer choices told us this was about sentence structure, so we need to know where they begin and end. Now, D is also worth talking about. I don't know if I'd call that a trap. That's probably more just that you, you didn't memorize the rule. We could have used the word and to join these two sentences together, but in order to do that, we would have needed a comma. So that would have needed a comma before the and, and then it's allowed. If it's just an and by itself, that's not enough. It's not enough to join two sentences. That's if we have a list of two things, then we can use and without a comma to join those two things together. That's not happening here. So we got another rule for and, uh, a conjunction. So there's a lot of things going on here, but this is a trap the SAT loves to set. So be prepared. They're going to do this. So know the rules and know to read everything when punctuation and sentence structure are on the line.